I'm just a servant of God. Just a servant of God. <laughs> so I gave him the chapati and the paneer sabji. To so Shimon Peres. Shimon Peres. <laughs> <Shimon Perez. laughs> it's amazing. So, so you will never find it anywhere. You know, I'm telling you. <laughs> Have you seen any time this? It's Look at this, like this the size, size of a coconut. <laughs> More than a coconut. That's huge. The most important question to follow is, can you set me and Moshe up to two beautiful Indian Jewish girls? Oh, yeah, of course. I'm not sure how to say it in English. Maybe kind of like the president of a generation. Yeah, yeah. Like the president of a generation. So this is Raul and he also speaks English. <laughs> Please be careful. The people in the street that speak Hebrew, they're not actually part of this travel company. They are scammers. Don't speak to them. What's up, friends? Welcome back. Well, welcome to India. Uh, it's my first time here in New Delhi, and today we're doing a really exciting video. We're going to be exploring the Jewish community of New Delhi, India. And we're here outside of Yuda Chaim Synagogue, or Judah Chaim Synagogue, which is the only running synagogue outside of Chabad, which we will visit later in this video, here in New Delhi, serving the only last Indian Jewish community of New Delhi. I'm going to introduce you guys to my friend Yecheskel. Shalom Yecheskel. Shalom, shalom, shalom. How are you doing, my friend? Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Nice to meet you. Friday. It's Friday today. We're preparing for yeah. Shabbat. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I dropped in on Yecheskel yesterday, randomly on WhatsApp. I got connected to him from other Jews here in the city. So Yecheskel is going to give us a tour, a little tour of, it's called Judah Chaim. Judah Chaim Synagogue. Judah Chaim Synagogue. Yeah. Well, first Yecheskel, maybe you can introduce yourself. Who, who are you? Uh, I'm just a servant of God. Just sure. a servant of God. <laughs> I'm serving the synagogue. Uh -huh. yeah. You're Indian? Yes, of course. Born I'm and raised in Delhi? Yeah. No, and no, originally I'm from Pune. Pune is a city Pune. near Bombay. Okay. And uh, I was here in the government service. Wow. So I'm here since 1980. Wow. For the last 43 years, I'm taking care of the synagogue, cemetery, library, wow. voluntarily. Voluntarily. Out of love. It is a mitzvah for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Synagogue was built in 1956. Mm -hmm. So almost now 67 years old. Wow. And, uh, from the very beginning, you know, we never had ordained rabbi uh, or hazan or shamash. So you're kind of like the rabbi. Uh, of course, I performed uh, many weddings and everything. <laughs> Uh, so you were the first Indian rabbi I've ever met in my life, you know that? Uh, it's exciting. Uh, this is the, oh, those days, you know, uh, 70 years ago, people used to give the donations. So you have seen, even 100 rupees, 200 rupees. It cost us a lot today, you know. Mm -hmm. Those days, 100 rupees means today's a lack of rupees. Mm -hmm. So this is the cinema. And uh, of course, we have the you know, Ashkenazi Jews, Sephardic Jews, but mostly in the synagogue, we have the Bene Israel, uh, you know, community Jews. They come here also? They all come here. Uh -huh. There are Jews from uh, Bene Menashe, from uh, Northeast. Mm -hmm. Then there are Jews from Bene Ephraim, from uh, Telangana in South India. And of course, we are basically we are catering to the needs of the Diplomats in the embassies and the high commission offices. There are diplomats, uh, you know, they come here from the embassy of Israel, then uh, USA, then Canada, UK. All these embassies people, they come here, especially during the high holidays. Every year there are more than 10,000 visitors coming to the synagogue. To this synagogue, yeah, wow. Yeah, of course. And you guys do Pesach, uh, uh, Hanukkah? Pes Pesach, Hanukkah, like... Uh, uh, a fortnight back, we celebrated Shabbat mm -hmm. and Hanukkah festival. But the beauty of this uh, synagogue is uh, because you know that India is a multi-religious country. This you know, the, what is the uh, population of India? One point four billion. Billion, yeah. And what is the population of the Jews in India? Actually, I have no idea. Just drop in the ocean. Now there are only 5,000 Jews all 5, over India. 5,000 Jews. Across all of India? All of India. Wow. Jews. How many in New Delhi? And New Delhi, maybe there are 10 families. 10 families. So wow. we have the microscopic minority. India is uh, one of the countries 
where the Jews have never faced anti-Semitism and persecution. You know, that, uh, it, you know, this is the beauty of this country that uh, we always consider when Mr. Shimon Peris came and the media asked me, uh, he came in the year 1992 and the BBC asked me, what is your impression about Israel and India? We have been living here peacefully for the last 2000 years. That is the beauty. I am involved in the interfaith activities. On behalf of the Judaism, I recited Psalm 23, uh, Mizmur Ledavit, Adonai Rohi, and in Hebrew and English, we have the Hanukkah festival. Outside, we light the Hanukkah candles. Here, we light the olive oil lights. This is a multi religious country, and this is the only synagogue in India, I could say. I never asked anyone what is his religion. Anyone could come to the synagogue and attend the prayers. If you have a faith in Judaism, you can come. But don't ask me for conversion. No conversions. <laughs> if you are born as a Hindu, if you are born as a Christian, follow your religion. But you are most welcome to come and attend the prayers. As I said, our community is the most dwindling community. So we have no choice. We cannot be Shomei Shabbat. We cannot be so orthodox to have the minyan, only the men, not the women. So here, you know, you could say we are in between conservative and uh, reform. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in your own category. No, no, because, you know, some people say, especially uh, embassy people, because they are Shomei Shabbat and uh, they are very orthodox. So they would say that you must have the ten men, not the women for me. But say for example, God forbid, there is a death in the community. We will not have ten men to say the Kaddish. So here, we have completely avoided gender discrimination. What is gender discrimination? If there are five men and five women, I, re I read the Torah, and even I uh, go to the cemetery, I say the Kaddish, even the Hashkaba, Every Friday, today is the Shabbat, there are two, three Hashkabas. So I just say the Hashkaba, if there are five men, five women. So, because when it is written in the Bible, in the Torah, it is not written. What is the Judaism? Judaism is not the patriarchal, it is a matriarchal. If a mother is a Jew, the children are automatically Jewish. And what God said to Abraham when he wanted to destroy two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, if Abraham said to God, Hashem, if there are ten righteous, I would, God said, okay, I will not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So he did not say ten righteous men or women. He said ten righteous persons. Even uh, Shabbat, I was telling to the congregation that first God of Hashem offered ten commandments. Mitzvot, this 613 mitzvot, not to the men, to the women. What is said in that, uh, yeah, I think it is in uh, uh, one of the Torah portion. God said, Oh, the children of Israel, oh, Jacob's children. Uh, you know, why? Because God is just what we say, God has given us the Ten Commandments. We don't say that, we receive the Ten Commandments. So, first He offered to the m women. If they accept it, then, you know, then our religion will flourish. I'm uh, worried at the end of the century, there won't be any Jews in India. Just imagine now. Once upon a time in 1930-35, there were about 50,000 Jews in India. Now how many Jews are left? I love the energy, Echesker. I love the energy. Uh, for this, uh, <laughs> our uh, prayer books, for the, uh, for the Israelis, this is for the Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi? No, you say for the Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi, you know. And uh, those who come here, those who are not able to read uh, Hebrew. So my daughter who is in Australia, she translated, uh, translated Hebrew into English. Say for example, uh, somebody, because many of the members of the congregation, they are not able to read the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So what they do, so for example, Psalm 29. Mizbole David, Abul Adonai, Bene Elim, Abul Adonai, Tabo Dawa, O Sabul Adonai, Kebo Dashemo, 
So like that, you know, they can read and uh, we can, you know, the, everybody gets involved in the prayers and every Friday, uh, since we are not able to hold the Shabbat services for the Torah reading, what we do today after the Arab Shabbat service, we explain the Torah portion to all the members of the public. We have the three Sefer Torahs. Yeah, can we see the Sefer Torah? Yeah. Are any of these Sifra Torah very old? Or yeah, like maybe, maybe. from India originally? Uh, originally not from India. Actually it was given to us by one of the synagogues in USA. USA. Maybe, uh, more than 300 years old. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So but you see the, the calligraphy, the wordings of there. So you know, you know, very clear. That's amazing. So you have three Sefer Torah here? Three Sefer Torah. Three Sefer Torah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, in fact, uh, we were given, uh, there was an offer for <laughs> one more Sefer Torah, mm -hmm. uh, Ashkenazi, but there was some difficulty, so we did not accept it. In USA or Australia uh, or in England or in Germany, even in Israel, I don't know how they protect it. Uh, I don't use any kind of uh, you know spray or anything. No purpose. I simply use um, camphor. Camphor. You know that. Uh, what is this? Is this uh, you know you have, when you have the uh, uh, this thing uh, woolen clothes or uh, you know during the winter uh -huh. you put all your things after the winter is over put it in the Almera cupboard. So you put this camphor and it will protect it. So mm -hmm. here, this will protect, there will be no insects, no this thing, absolutely, I've been taking care for the last 43 years. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, these are beautiful Sifletola. I've never seen them like that before. But what is said in the Shabot that God gave us all the 613 mitzvot, especially the Ten Commandments. He says, you know, these commandments are to be, whatever said, has to be carried forward. You must follow in your day to day's life, not to be kept in the holy ark for, to worship. You have to follow in your life what God said, Hashem said, how is God? You know, He said, God is merciful. God is compassionate, God is forgive, you know, forgiveness, God is tolerant, you know, abundance in love, slow to anger. So we must have those attributes. So we must follow in our day-to-day life. Not the, uh, you know, those Ten Commandments put it in the holy heart. We must follow in our day-to-day life. And this message I have been giving, you know, uh, to all these uh, religious leaders. Every month, there are more than 10 to 15 seminars, conferences, all over India. And uh, I've been, uh, you know, now I'll be going tomorrow also. Then there is another festival, Yoga Day on the uh, 21st of May. And then next week, I'll be in Bombay. How to bring spirituality in the politics. Uh, that we have to consider. Because besides my religious role, I am also a lawyer. But I did not practice. 
I said, no, I must devote my full time and energy to the service of God. And uh, there are many personalities, including Dalai Lama. Wow, he, he, this is amazing. He, he visited the synagogue. <laughs> this and, is so cool. Uh, uh, his birthday will be on the 6th of July. I'll be there and uh, uh, very good friend of mine. The Dalai Lama? Dalai Lama, very good friend. This is you and the Dalai Lama together. Dalai Lama. What and, year was this? And when, very recently, and when he was here, uh, he said, uh, yes, can give me the cap of the same color. He was wearing this, so I gave the kippah of the same color. Then, uh, when I was here, uh, I said, uh, I would like to read the Mishbenaka for you. So, I, when I started saying the Mishbenaka, he said, no, but you are not keeping your hand on my head. I said, how can I keep my hand on your head? Because you are the God for Tibetans. He says, no, you are, you are everything. And he, you know, he is my son. You will meet him now. He is in the library. And uh, see her. You will find that, uh, see. Blessing the Dalai Lama. Blessing the Dalai Lama. Because he has seen me earlier, 1998, when the Pope John Paul from Vatican City came to India. Uh, I recited the Vishwarakat for him also. And I gave him the copy of the Kumash. And then I gave, uh, gave him the Talit also to him. So this is the, so all my hundred articles about Judaism has been published in the various newspapers. So the last book I wrote, The Lord is One. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Ka Baruch Shem Then comes Vihavta Ed Adonai Eloheinu And this was released by the President of India The President of India is releasing my book uh, I'm here with uh, Prince Charles uh, It was, now he is a King Charles But that time he was, he came even uh, at the time of the you know, the last rites of uh, our previous uh, former Prime Minister of India, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi. And uh, he came with one of the uh, members of the, uh, you know, you are uh, the state, Parliament of the UK. And uh, at the commission ground, he was surprised to see that I was saying the Jewish prayer. So he, he said, I'm really you know, surprised how come Ezekiel could see the Jewish prayers at the Hindu cremation with the former president of India, Mr. Dr. A.P.G. Abdul Kalam. And uh, this is again here uh, with the uh, Dalai Lama. And here uh, in 1992, uh, Mr. Shimon Peris came to Shimon Peris. Yes. He came twice and my son now you will find him. He is a musician. Mm -hmm. And he said, Ezekiel, you, I would like to have the typical Indian food. So I gave him the chapati and the paneer sabji. To Shimon Peres. Shimon Peres. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. So, so this, you know, it's so cool. This, uh, all these good memories, you know. So this uh, I'm giving to you. You can, uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank it's you so easy. much. Yeah, just you can do it and uh, let This is good for us. We, we can use this. Yeah. 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 I don't know how to do it, but I will just try. <laughs> there are many students that try to make comparative study about the Hinduism and Judaism. What is the, uh, you know, uh, similarity between Christianity and Judaism. Because when I go and teach to the uh, Christian university students, I tell them, who was Jesus Christ after all? He was not a, he was not a Christian. He was Jew only. This is the only library I always say with pride that I started Interface Study Center. I have the holy scriptures of all the nine religions. And my aim is to find out what are the similarities? What are the commonalities? All the religions, they talk about mercy, compassion, forgiveness, tolerance, humility. So why not we have those, you know, 
attributes and follow and you have a dear to be said if there are differences don't criticize and abba hilal said what is hateful and hurtful to you do not do to others that is the whole of the torah if you do, do not like anything that using the bad words then just don't say the bad words for others so this is the hanukia here we like the candles inside we like the olive oil lamp and uh, here i say no that multi religious people will come and they will and that you could say the biggest size i think you must have not seen anywhere coconut size ethro just go and see oh wow go wow. there and take the picture of that <laughs> i i don't i don't know how to explain what an ethro is to people who don't know what judaism is but it's a fruit that we use during one of the high holidays of sukkot yeah I have never this is a uh, etrog on steroids that's crazy see that this is the normal see size this, oh, see right that here. one this guy's wow Yeheskel what are you feeding this etrog you will never find it anywhere you know I'm telling you <laughs> yes, I was seen any time this etrog look at this like this the size of a coconut <laughs> more than a coconut that's huge see? and for the brit mila and you know people and the, at times we used to get about more than 70 80 etrogs i used to give it to many of the synagogues wow see the size of the etrog it's huge absolutely massive <laughs> i've never seen that before <laughs> i was working with the government of india i worked for some time in the ministry of health so in ayush department that is you know there are uh, like we have the allopathy there are indian system of medicine like ayurveda yunani siddha amche research so i learned about this uh, you know about indian herbal medicines so we planted some of the herbal medicines here plants here and thereafter i joined the national human right commission i was working with the national human right commission i worked with the minority commission also but everything first you know priority is uh, senegal senegal then other things mm. i avoid going for the seminar conferences uh, other than the arab shabbat to so shabbat and uh, arab shabbat and shabbat is very very uh, precious and very close to my heart general jack jacob community hall general jack jacob is the only jewish uh, you know who, who was the governor of asra governor of uh, goa and governor of punjab and uh, he is always remembered by the indians he was the hero of 1971 war then there was a war between pakistan and east of pakistan right. now bangladesh he liberated bangladesh wow and he has been given the highest civilian award by the government of bangladesh wow and uh, he, he just uh, i think on the s uh, 2nd of may he completed 100 years so i'll take you to the cemetery to show his grave also he's buried here he's buried here wow uh, yeah, yeah. i was given that honor to say the prayers at the time of burial this was uh, uh, you know established in the year 1979 god bless you god bless you god bless you this is the library uh, i'm taking care of the library as i said in india there are more than nine religions and uh, i was with M modi ji mm -hmm. prime minister very recently and this was given to me by pope john paul you will find there are you know some of the mementos are lying outside there is no place mm -hmm. to keep it there <laughs> are thousands of outside because every week i'm going so this is yeheskel's son who is a musician he makes no copyright music for youtubers just like me so check out his channel he's going to play us a little something Okay, so where are we heading to now, Yaskin? Now we are going to the cemetery. Cemetery. And, uh, just to would like to tell you that we have the uh, guards. Uh, you know, they have been 
posted here by the government of India. Uh, after 2008, there was an attack on the Khabat house in Bombay. And you know that uh, sad story that how the rabbi and his wife, Rebecca, they were killed. So since then, all the synagogues in India, they have been provided with the security. Wow. This uh, cemetery is 100 years old. You will find that uh, there are more, about 42 graves here. Come. Uh, of course, now due to, due to the rain, you know, you could find the plants and everything. Recently, one tree fell down, so they are getting it clean. After the Colonel Joseph Ephraim Jira, he died in action during India-Pakistan War in 1965. Recently, the tree fell down during the mm -hmm. rains. This is the grave of General Jack Frederick Raphael Jacob, who very recently celebrated his 100 years on the 2nd of May. This is the grave of uh, Gina Gupta. She is an American uh, Jewish, married a Hindu, Gupta. But when she died, her last wish to was get buried in the Jewish cemetery. Mm -hmm. So we had this. Similarly, there is another grave. She married to a Punjabi. Her husband. She married to Saigal, a Hindu person. Okay, so I'm here with the amazing Yecheskel rabbi and caretaker of this. No, no, uh, I'm not an order rabbi, my dear. I'm an <laughs> spiritual rabbi, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very much about fluid Judaism as well, the same That's way sir, that you. But do. what everything, whatever rabbi does, I'm doing it here. Yeah. But uh, you know, just to tell you, make it clear, I'm not an order rabbi, but. Whatever the duties. But you take the duties, that's good. That's, yeah, that's the right, most important part. Right from the birth to the end, death. Right. I do everything. You know. yeah. So I wanted to ask you first, this is a question that I've been asking all of the rabbis in the videos that I've been oh, working with. Okay. Is what is the most difficult part of being a Jew in India to you? Difficult part is yeah. okay, I'm worried about the most dwindling community because as I said, early 1950s, there were about 35,000 Jews. Now there are only 5,000 Jews in India. And my second, uh, the difficulty is that our young generation, you know, our children, uh, as I was a child, I was having that aptitude for the learning Hebrew, uh, going to the sixth, but can I say, now that aptitude within our young generation, I don't find it, you know, that uh, even for the, uh, you know, uh, Bar Miswa, Bar Miswa, uh, to, you, you want to forget about the Torah portion. They, are, they will be able to read the Torah portion. You want to tell them the Barakot before saying the, reading the Torah portion. They are not, uh, you know, they want, they do not want to come to the Hebrew classes. So that is most disturbing for me that, uh, you know, that. And secondly, as I said, the most difficult part that we must now, apart from the ch change of time, we must change our attitudes, our certain rituals, you know, so that we must uh, try to adjust ourselves. To adapt to adapt the changing to world. to the new changes yeah. world. But we must maintain our identity as a Jew. And I wanted to ask you furthermore, what is your connection to Jews globally? like? Israeli Jews and other Indian Jews, American Jews. As, as I said, there are, every year we get about 10,000 visitors coming to India. And most of them are you know, Jews, or 10,000 Jews. So whether it is in America, England, in Israel, Germany, any part. Uh, by, because since I'm involved in the activity, involved in the interfaith activities, so interfaith activities are not confined only to the Jewish community. It's all over the world, globally. So you can ask about me to any person on this earth uh, about the Delhi community, about the health care, they will tell you. Because, you know, one has to sacrifice. That's what I'm repeatedly telling. One must sacrifice his life, his passion, his everything for the pet care and God, and God will surely reward you. And, and and about Israel, how do you feel about Israel? Have you been to Israel many yes, times? Yes, a number of times. Every yeah. time when my father passed away, my mother passed away, 
and uh, you know, I go and meet them, my sisters and everything. In fact, uh, <laughs> I will not be able to go, but uh, on the 3rd of June, my uh, sister's, uh, Abigail's uh, grandson is getting Bar Mitzvah in the synagogue. But I go often there, of course, Israel is our country, you know, where our ancestors live and what we are having the Israel, you know, Baruch Hashem. But uh, at the same time, you know, we have spent our life in India. Mm -hmm. And, and again, repeatedly, I'm telling you, India is the only one of the countries in the world where Jews have never faced anti-Semitism persecution. We have got all kinds of liberty, freedom, freedom of religion, everything is there. And you could find a Jewish person saying the Mizmor Ledavi at the new parliament house uh, inauguration ceremony, Jewish person like me, I'm a very small person. But Government of India, law of government of India. If there is a, any uh, prayer meeting, government of India prayer meeting for Mahatma Gandhi ji, Pandit Jawala Nehru ji, or any other person, first they will invite me. Come and say the prayer, Jewish prayer. That I find, feel that I am proud to be a Jew. Of course, it's very difficult to be Jew. You do want to say a person, Jewish person in Israel, he doesn't find it difficult to adjust. He has to go to the Ulfa, he has to learn the Hebrew, right. then adapt uh, so many rituals there and according to the uh, state, if you are in Beth Shemesh, ultra-orthodox, oh, you know, you know that, uh, how they, uh, you know, have uh, this is very stick foods, uh, observing the Shapa. Right. But uh, if you go to other places, you know, similarly in India, and I would like to tell you that uh, during the Second World War, why I am saying again, I, India, 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 because during the Second World War, during 1939 and 1945, a person like a Schindler, he helped 1,200 uh, women and children, 700 women and uh, 500 men, uh, children. Somebody like uh, Schindler, they helped him, helped them to get, a, he put them into the ship. And they, sh they should start moving from the Poland, otherwise you'll get killed. And that ship, went from all the European countries, Iraq, Iran, ultimately the ship anchored near the Bombay port. And at that time it was the British government. British government said, no, we cannot allow you to be in India as a refugee. Because they are having their own problems with Indian freedom struggle. Ultimately the Maharaja of Jamnagar in Gujarat, he came to know that there are 1200 our Jewish brothers and sisters, if I don't welcome them, they will go back and they will get killed. He took all of them to Jamnagar, Gujarat. He is a uh, Vijay Singh. He was the king because before the 1947, there was the priestly states, you know, like a Maharaja or the uh, princess, mm -hmm. prince. So he took all of them and he sent all those 500 children to the army school. He looked after them till 1945 and after the second world was over, he managed to send them back again to Poland, Hungary, uh, 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 Denmark and one of the person, he became the Prime Minister of Poland and the, that person who held them, the Maharaja, is known as a Bapuji. So there is a street in Poland you know, named after Bapuji. And that group again came in 1988. They erected a monument there to show to the young generation, see, we were here. And that group again came in 2000 when there was an uh, uh, earthquake in Gujarat and they adapted two villages for the So What I'm trying to tell you, India always, you know, fought Israel. And uh, we had a diplomatic relations now. I'm so happy that it will progress by leaps and bounds and we will have more, more, more. Uh, and I am looking forward for a forthcoming visit of our Prime Minister, Mr. Benjamin Thanayu, to this synagogue. And I would like to welcome you. That's so beautiful. I mean, it's such a beautiful message about unity. My last question, it's kind of a joke question, kind of also serious. I'm curious. How does it work with uh, like a shidduch here in India? Have you ever organized a shidduch if there was a young Indian Jewish boy, he wanted to marry an Indian Jewish girl uh, here, he wanted to find a fellow Jew. Is that something that's possible here? To See, as I said that uh, now there are only 5,000 Jews all over right. and uh, uh, 
and uh, of course most of them are you know consecrated in bombay only you know. in bombay in bombay there are 2000 jews and most of the indians they uh, migrated to israel the girls are 60% boys also and again the girls are more educated and i am talking to the boy so there was some difficulties at initial time that uh, earlier the parents used to tell try uh, what about the condition what are the status of the boy about his education his family background about his employment then they would to get their daughter married but uh, then afterwards what happened that uh, as our started our jewish community started moving to israel and other european countries like uk and australia now we are finding a difficulty and uh, and uh, very outspoken there are no exception there are many many uh, jewish uh, couples uh, even in bombay uh, they married outside the community why so even in delhi there are uh, three four couples they married outside the community uh, i never asked they come here i said let the children decide what they, they want to be we don't want to follow the father's religion or right. mother's religion and some of them are coming i never asked them what is their religion Many uh, women are coming. Of course, their husbands they never feel sh- ashamed to come to the synagogue because they know that Abba will never ask about. And they are more learned. They learn Hebrew. They learn everything. So I mean, the most important question to follow is: Can you set me and Moshe up? Can you shiduach me and Moshe up with two beautiful Indian Jewish girls? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 So we're going to leave our contact details. Oh, yeah, just give it to me. Of course, you have to give me the wedding link. <laughs> <laughs> we want to marry two beautiful Jewish Indian girls. Okay. And now, I'm saying the Mishra Karamat from both of you. Mishra Bera Kaboteno, Abraham Sat, Yako, Moshe, Yaro, who died with Shalom, who is Mara Kit Kebot. Your name? Tal. Sat. Ben. May God bless both of you with uh, joyous, harmonious, peaceful, successful, healthiest and long 120 years of life. Let us say Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Echeskel. A pleasure to meet you. Thank you. We're here outside of the Sababa Cafe. Uh, Sababa is a term in Hebrew. I think that we took from Arabic. That kind of means like everything's okay, it's all good. And this restaurant serves Indian, Chinese, continental, Israeli, Nepalese, and Tibetan food. I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of South Asian people who watch this video for the first time and don't know who I am. I'm actually Jewish but from Iraqi descent. My family is Iraqi and my mom's side and Turkish on my dad's side. I've got zero knowledgeable connection myself to India or to South Asia in any way, other than the fact that I lived in Sri Lanka for a little while. We're on the street right now where the Beit Chabad is or the synagogue and there's a mosque right here. No, thank you. So we're heading over here down to this area. You can see there is a uh, a kind of like a flag. And we, we got to explore this briefly yesterday. This is, I would consider this like almost like a Jewish alley. It's kind of insane, like a lot of the Indian people here are speaking Hebrew because I guess there's tons of Israeli tourists that come here. But uh, we want to start off this little Jewish adventure by showing you guys the uh, the Jewish life here by the synagogue. We come down here. This, this alley is what I would refer to as New Delhi's Little Israel. Actually unbelievable. So I really want to show this alley off a little bit later because there's so much kind of Israeli writing and Hebrew writing everywhere here. But first of all, the Beit Chabad, you can see secured. And we've got our wonderful rabbi here. Nice to meet you. What is, uh, what is your name, who you are? Can you tell us who you are and what you're doing here in India? I'm Mendy. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm the Shliach here now for, uh, for a little bit of replacing the place of my uh, uncle. He's uh, the rabbi here. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are the place for every Jew in uh, India and in Delhi. This is the Chavarros. And you were saying you're a, you're a Shaliyah. Are you, what is a Shaliyah? Are you Indian? Are you original? No, I'm uh, Israeli. Uh-huh. Is and I feel like it's a good idea before we go upstairs into the synagogue to show. This is actually the Rebbe right here. Yeah. And uh, is he from India? What's his connection to India? Or there's no connection to India? 
So the connection in India that the Rebbe is, it's called Nasiador. Uh-huh. So the Nasiador, I'm not sure how to say it in English. Maybe you will. Kind of like the president of a generation? Yes. I don't really know how to explain yeah, it either. No, okay. You did good. <laughs> so it's the president of the generation. So good, uh, good explanation. And this is why he's sitting on uh, on uh, New York because he's the president of the generation. So we care we care about every Jew, also every every person, but especially for every Jew. And this is why he's sitting in New York and he caring about everyone that that uh, traveling around in, even in India in some uh, place that no one heard about. And there's a lot of story. And uh, so. I wanted to get a tour of the Beit Chabad or the Chabad house in English because we've been traveling around Asia the last four months. We've been in Cambodia and Vietnam and Thailand. We've seen almost every Beit Chabad we can see. And they all come in different shapes and sizes. Everything's very different in each place. And this one is very different than the other ones I've seen. So maybe you can give us kind of like a tour of yeah, the Beit sure. Chabad. Yeah, but um, I can uh, explain that. You know, every, every uh, Beit Chabad, every Chabad house is very different from the others. Right. Because the rabbi give the power for the rabbi in the place in the shliach mm-hmm. to to make it as as he yeah. as he think. and also every place is uh, you know it depends on the people on the place mm-hmm. so it, we are in main bazaar it's the main street in Delhi it's a crazy place but every the all the all the Israel is coming here to to. Uh, to stop by, buy tickets for all over the all over India, mm-hmm. and this is why Chabad House is here. It's it's a small place. It's not a, it's not clean. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's I, the I don't history? Know if you show in the video, but uh, what's the history of the building? Though, did you construct this Beit Chabad or your uncle constructed this Chabad? No, How long so, has it been around? And so we are we about to leave the place mm-hmm. because we're working on a on a new new massive building on mm-hmm. the main street. It's also a crazy story, and uh, the Rebbe make the uh, you know the Rebbe help there very a lot with uh, with his powers. But uh, so the, this is the first Chabad house in India. Oh, really? First one? Yeah, first one. It's open on 1996, about 27 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it's open like uh, it, it starts with uh, like a room on a, on a guest house, like two rooms they connected, you know. And then it's coming uh, big and big. So uh, about uh, twelve years ago, um, they moved on to a new building. It's around uh, two alleys uh, away, and then they got here. My uncle, uh, after six years here, he make it. Make her new, you know, it's not looking like uh, 10 years ago, mm-hmm. <laughs> looking like uh, more modern. And uh, we hope that on the holidays, on the Rosh Hashanah, Sukkot, we will move to the new building. Okay, so really the soon. The building is just, just like 50 meters uh, outside of the, the old Chabad house. Wow. And you were saying this is the first Beit Chabad in India or in Delhi? All over India. So all the other Beit Chabad that opened up in India, they started from here. This is like yeah. the original source of it. Yeah, this wow. is the first place. Amazing. And so for, for those of you guys who don't know, India has been on like the Israeli traveler backpackers trail for a very long time. This is a super toured country by Israeli travelers. As you can see, there's many Israeli travelers here right now. And people come here and always use Batei Chabad as kind of like a source of connecting with home a little bit. Like you come, you can leave your backpack here. You know that you have a friendly rabbi like you who's going to help take care of them. And you guys as Chabad, you actually coordinate with yeah, like the so- government to help get yes. Israelis back to Israel. So my, my uncle Akiva, Rabbi Akiva, mm-hmm. he managed all the all the operations and getting flight and uh, getting the you know the buses to to the airport because there is no there the the Indian government wasn't allowed to even move. So there is videos maybe maybe you can see it there on Facebook and uh, and uh, other police for um, the Indian took the videos. And all the all the street, the main street, main bazaar, is empty, and there is only Israelis sitting around. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, was a special, uh, a special uh, operation. Also, the the Israeli consul uh, helped them, but uh, he, it was here all the operation. Mm-hmm. This was like the main center of everything happening. Yeah. And maybe you can give us a tour of like the Sefer Torah, yeah. the rest of the... 
So, this is the show, <laughs> the Knesset. It's uh, kind of together because the Chabad house is, is our home. Chabad mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, But you can start here. There is a coffee, coffee table. We bring uh, Turkish coffee from Israel because the, the people like it. They don't like any other coffee. Yeah. So it's also an operation to send everything. <laughs> And also I should uh, say, you know, like Israeli backpackers a lot of time They're doing like a post-army trip, usually six months, seven months, a year even. And a lot of times they're not experiencing food from back home for like long periods of time. So whenever you come to a Beit Chabad, you know you can either buy the groceries from back home or... Yeah, so here in India, it's a, it's a very big problem. It's not easy because they're not allowing you, allowing you to import any, any of the, uh, the products. Really? It's crazy because they like to to use only uh, made in India. Wow! So you can't import any so kosher products from it, Israel. It's very complicated. Uh -huh. So we just send this by by Israeli Israeli people that coming with uh, with uh, you know you can you can carry on with you uh, two bags. Mm -hmm. So we asking for people if you, if they can take extra bag for us, not for us, for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. Uh, For us, because we manage that, we manage that. So uh, when this time after Pesach, the, we have a, a very big store with, uh, like you said, with uh, kind of uh, uh, snacks from Israel and everything. Bamba, basically, this is the uh, most famous snacks. But this time everything is empty, so uh, it's very it's very hard from that. Uh, so this you're saying this right here, this is very valuable here. Yeah, it's not easy. This is not a. This is gonna be a hot commodity. This is worth a lot in India. Yeah. So, no, this is not the Turkish uh, coffee, but this is. Yeah. This is the gold. This is the gold, gold stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. And we also have here, if you know, in India, it's not the uh, the water is not clean. Yeah. So, so we're not allowed to drink any water, and uh, so we have here a special um, a special uh, machine like. Uh, very very expensive machine that uh, clean the water for all the building for cooking for the kitchen and uh, also for drinking because every time pe uh, the, the the people buying only close uh, close bottles but here we we give them the option to refill them mm -hmm. to just drink you know it's very hot now it's about 40 degrees sometimes 50 degrees and uh, so people that coming from outside getting some AC, some, uh, <laughs> some uh, cold water, that drinkable, and uh, coffee, it's not for the, not, not for the first minute, but after you're sitting here for one hour, it's very cold, so <laughs> you need to drink something, yeah. So this is the coffee, uh, coffee uh, corner. We got here in Wufot, Kudurim. This is a medicine. medicine. Yeah. Wow, say? this is this is cool. I haven't yeah. seen this yet in a bit. Chabad. I'm sure they have it, but we we haven't shown this off. So you just have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is so cool. Full of, full of Israeli, not not just Israeli, Indian, everything. And people that ending the trip, they don't need it anymore. They, they just leave, leave their pills leave and stuff here. Wow. And the next one, they need something, and you know, sometimes it's it's emergencies. Someone need you're not feeling good or something. You need it, so just send them. Take whatever you need. <laughs> yeah, it's a great example of Jews helping yeah. Jews, just leaving so this is the medication here. Israeli Shana. It's uh, first, uh, first aid. Yeah, this is not full. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> we need to refill it, but uh -huh. uh, this is what we have uh, now. And here, it's like a small place. Uh, Sometimes people leaving some uh, gas, it's hard to find yeah. it here. Um, And, uh, you know, bags, leaving, yeah. yeah, something value that uh, someone don't need anymore, you can leave it here, and the next one will take it. Amazing. Uh, if it's bigger stuff, we can leave it there, but uh, you know, this is the the place. Mm -hmm. And here we have the Moshiach, Moshiach corner. <laughs> we have here first Kippa, Yamuka, yeah, and explanation about Moshiach, about the Rebbe, what is exactly Moshiach, what is redemption, Geula, 
everything you know this is the this one's in hebrew or, or just in, in english and no most of the most of the thing series in hebrew okay most of them is right They're coming all over from all over the world from um like this this week was here one guy from australia one guy from french a few guys from the states you know from every place but 90 percent are israelis so mm-hmm. everything is in hebrew. if someone needs something in english so we hear but uh the most of the people are Israeli. We have here yes, yesterday everything uh, uh, everything was empty so we need to refill but mm-hmm. there is small Moshe flag so this is very very nice because everyone taking it and putting it on the on the bag. Mm-hmm. You know it's like a sign that eh, I'm Israeli. Okay, I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like a book Book, uh, book corner. We have uh, Isha and Muna about the Rebbe. Some uh, letters from the Rebbe about uh, believing about uh, science and Torah and that kind of stuff. Some of the people finding it very interesting. And you know, some of the books, Tanya, Tehilim. Um, let's see. So this is the corner I'm sitting here. Um, or someone else, if there is someone else, now I'm here alone. Um, and you know, we have some feeling. You, uh, by the way, you put on film? No, not yet, not today. Let's maybe do it. maybe you can explain. <laughs> That's a good trip. That's very yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, for full clarity, I, I sort of set that bit up. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. That was good acting. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I'm asking everyone. So, right. Uh, it's the first thing when we came special. here. Yeah. <laughs> well, we came here yesterday to sort of do a little introduction. One of the first things he asked us, did you put on tefillin today? But this is something that, I mean, I know this very well, but maybe you can explain for the people watching this video. What is, what is yeah, tefillin sure. and why do you help people put it on? So, um, we Jewish people, we have 613 um, rules. Mm-hmm. Mitzvot, mitzvot. Mitzvot. Okay. So, I show you're familiar with some of them. Many of them, yeah. Many of them, yeah. Maybe but not all, there, but yeah. There is many that we're not doing today. Right. So, uh, so this is what I'm saying, not all of them. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, one of the rules, one of the mitzvot is we have to fill in that, uh, for the hand and fill in for the head. So it's saying here, this is the prayer that we sang together when we put on the fill in, we pray that prayer. It said... Um, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, first. Am Yisrael, you will know and you, um, you will understand that God is one, only one. Not uh, There is no many gods, only one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and after he's saying, there's all, uh, all text, but Ukshartam leot al yadecha. It means... You will rub it on your end, mm-hmm. and it will be between of your eyes. So it's not here. It's not here. It's here. It should be straight uh, between of the eyes. And uh, also there is mezuzah on uh, every entry and every door. There is also mezuzah. Is the, um, so inside of it there is a cloth, kind of so, like a card or a scroll with a, a scroll prayer inside. Scroll. Scroll. Yeah. This is the right word, um, and it's saying uh, it, there is a text of the Torah and of Shema Israel, and uh, we're putting it on, we're wrapping it on here, on the hand, you will see it in a minute, <laughs> <laughs> and on the head. Mm-hmm. So what is the meaning? The meaning is on the hand is against the heart, okay? On the head is against the brain. So we need to take our heart and our brain and connect to God. So this is the way we're doing it. Mm-hmm. We take our heart and brain and we're saying, this is not, this is not us here. Not, we, we're not thinking only of us. We're taking the heart, we're feeling that we want God. We're taking the brain and we're thinking we, and we, we understand that we want God. So, um, so this is one of the, of the rules that we should keep every day. So the Rebbe on, um, it was a war in Israel on Sheshet uh, Ayamim, it's called, Six Days War. Mm-hmm. It was, which I know on the Hebrew, on the Hebrew year, it was Tafshin Zayin. No, Tafshin Chav Zayin. 
Um, so I'm not sure which uh, which uh, no, year is it on the yeah. on the on the regular uh, years, but it was many years ago, maybe 50 years ago, <coughs> and it was very you know very big uh, war on uh, Israel. It was uh, you know people could dying and everything, and the Rebbe go out with the mivza mivza tefillin. It's called. It's the the operation of tefillin. operation of putting on tefillin. <laughs> yeah, and it went you know it went uh, very very big operation till today. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the Lubavitchers go all the way to the to the to the borders to put on tefillin with uh, soldiers, and today we're doing it every like with everyone. Yeah, but there that time it was uh, with the soldiers a big uh, a big operation. So till today, this is one of the of the of the, the stuff that the the Rebbe said. Verau kol amei aretz kishem Hashem nikra alecha veyaru mimeka. I will explain that all of the world will see that the, the name of God on us, and they will afraid. And and this is the this is the said on on the pasuk and in the Torah and, um, in the Torah. Yeah. And the explain is, uh, I think Rashi is saying, Elut filin shebarosh. What are, what are we talking about? About um, the head, the feeling. So These the, ones. yeah, the left ones. So um, the that feeling when we put it on, all of the world will understand that the name of God is on us. And they will afraid, and they will do not, uh, and they will do not uh, make us any problems, or you know, fight with us, or try to kill us. So um, you know, it's uh, it's the history. After six days, um, Israel won, won, wins all the in all the borders and all the places. So uh, um, f uh, from that day, every, everyone that coming to Chabad House, also you can see it on Tel Aviv, on uh, Jerusalem. Even in New York, I I, I did it uh, one one year in uh, Manhattan. So uh, we asking, we stopping everyone. You Jewish, you put on film today. Let's do it. And yeah, you'll see it everywhere. Uh, across. Just one minute, and it's uh, connect you and God. And it's funny you were saying in New York, like something to add into this video. I used to live in New York for a little while, uh, and one day I, this is something I do every day in my life. And one day I forgot to do it, and I was in the middle of working, making YouTube videos in the city. I was far away from a Beit Chabad. I think I was somewhere in the Bronx or deep in Brooklyn, and I couldn't find a synagogue near me. There's an app called like it's like the Uber to fill in, <laughs> and you literally call upon a religious Jew to drive <laughs> and bring you to fill in. Put it on. No money is exchanged. It's purely based on doing a mitzvah or doing a good deed for your fellow Jew. Absolutely unbelievable. Like uh, I hate. Great story. And you literally just download the app, you call somebody, and they'll arrive with the fill. And I, I actually, I used it like two or three times because sometimes I forget, uh, or sometimes I'm busy and I didn't have time to do it in the morning, so I do it later in the day. And uh, it was an amazing thing. And I had my non-Jewish friends next to me when that happened the first time. They were like, "This is the most bizarre thing <laughs> I've ever seen. Just get a random Jew to come to you, <laughs> wrap this thing on you, and leave. And there's no exchange. This is the business." <laughs> we business on uh, God's business. Not, God's uh, business. Yeah. Wow, cool. So, <laughs> so maybe you can uh, show us how how we actually put it on. You can. Let's do it. Because again, this is something that people like him will be doing for many Jews around the world. Yeah. I don't think we. I don't think we filmed like a tutorial on this yet at any point. So no? maybe a good thing. We usually just show us putting it on when we're praying. Okay. So we starting with the end. Yad. Eventual yad. Mm -hmm. And we have here the text. Okay. So now you write your lefty. I'm ready. Why I'm asking? Why? <laughs> because we need to we need to wrap it down on the um, weak end. Yeah. The weakest end. So if you write it, so on the left. If you lefty. On the right. I actually didn't know this. I didn't know that that's how it works. Mm -hmm. I thought everybody. Puts and if it on you're the left. if you're ambidextrous, so if you use both, you put it on your your left. Uh huh. Smart. No, Smart you, thoughts <laughs> from Moshe. You said something good. But if yeah. you use both, you need to to put on the both. Oh, you on put both on both. Things. Yeah. Really? Every day yeah. you do it twice. Yeah. What? God <laughs> bless him. Not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So okay. we wrap so, it up. Yeah. So then we bless. Say after me. Baruch Ata. Baruch Ata. Adonai. Adonai. Eloheinu. Eloheinu. Melech Haolam. Melech Haolam. Asher kideshanu. Asher kideshanu. Bemitzvotav. Bemitzvotav. Betzivanu. Betzivanu. Laaniach tefilin. Laaniach tefilin. See, you know what you're doing. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Let me place it for you. Perfect. You see, between of the eyes and the, against the arrow. Yeah, I've noticed that every pair of tefillin is slightly different. Like around the world, yeah. some of them are Sephardi, some of them are Ashkenazi, some of them. So we have a few of them. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. a little different than the ones that I have, but still get the concept down the same. And you're not supposed to talk until after you finish the last blessing around your finger. Yeah. So maybe you use for this one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one I use. So this is a new pair. <laughs> but you, you got the cool. other one. And so then, so the we prayer. starting. Yeah. We start, I want to show you here, we, we sing two kinds uh, of mishpatim, uh, mm -hmm. and one is of Ahavat Israel. that Areini Mekabel say. Areini Mekabel alai mitzvot, mitzvah, 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 ase, shel, ve'avta, ve'raecha kamocha. Ve'raecha kamocha, you want to explain what is just right? I actually can't translate it that well. Okay, so there is I'm one, of the the rule, one of the rules, one of the rules, yeah. One of the rules is also about the Israel that we need to to love the fellow Jew. Mm -hmm. So on the morning before the pray, we we saying that I'm accepting the mitzvah to do it today to love the fellow Jew. Mm -hmm. So this this is uh, we saying before the the pray, and now we saying say Yechi Yechi Adonai Adonenu Morenu Verabenu Melech Hamashiach Lolam Vayel. And this and now you just said. That um, in English there is also in English, long live the king, um, Moshiach, um, King Moshiach, forever and ever. What, what what does this mean? That we get we accepting the the kingdom of Moshiach on us, mm -hmm. and uh, the the Moshiach will live forever and ever. That we 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 just want to to get into the redemption to the Geula. So one of the the, the stuff the Rebbe said always. That we need to 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 say Yechi Amelech. What is Yechi Amelech? Long live the king. Long live the king. Mm -hmm. That we accepting the Moshiach to be the to, to be our king mm -hmm. because a king without people is not a king. Right. So we need to say you are our king. So this also we sing before the prayer. Now you will bless Brikata Torah, the okay. blessing of the Torah. That before we sing some uh, Torah, we need to bless. It's a special uh, blessing. It's actually this is all new to me. I've never I never do this before tefillin. Actually, this is the first <laughs> time I'm doing this one. You know, it's not. It's uh, sometimes there there are people that saying it after. Mm -hmm. There is people that you know you, you don't have to 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 say it to make the feeling. So right. There is uh, also some people that hurry up. So I saying only Shema Yisrael. Yeah. Usually it's what I do. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, then you say Baruch Ata Adonai. <laughs> אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר בחר בנו מכל העמים ונתן לנו את תורתו, ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. Now you can say with the right hand on the... So Shema Yisrael, the most important prayer in the Jewish world pretty much. Yeah, this is the basic. Okay, so we finished praying, let's continue with the tour of the synagogue now. So what's next? This is the, like you said, the show, this book. This is the uh, part two, but this book is full of the the Rebbe's sichot. Uh, mm -hmm. The what the Rebbe is saying every every parsha every time, and this full of um, uh, talking about Moshiach and talking about the the president of the world, 
and the Rebbe saying that he and that we are on the last generation of Galut and the first generation of Geula. So there is no way, and also there is more uh, places that the Rebbe said that the president of, of the world is uh, is alive, and the second is Moshiach, already Moshiach, and the Rebbe is already Moshiach. There is and um, full uh, signature of uh, rabbis that signed it, uh, that the Rebbe is Moshiach. You know, it's not for uh, two minutes, but uh, so we believe, and from what the Rebbe is saying, that the Rebbe, the Rebbe is alive in a physical body. We're not seeing him. I, I, went, I just went back from 770, the Rebbe's shul on Brooklyn. I'm sure you, you went there once. And I didn't see the Rebbe, yeah? I'm not saying, but the problem is mine, because I believe that the Rebbe is saying that uh, he is alive. So, because we are on the last generation of the Galut and the first generation of Geula, the, of the redemption, so there is no way to change generation. So there is no next president, and the world cannot be exist without a next president. So these days we're doing it by Igor Kodesh. So this is the. All of the letters, not all of them, <laughs> there is many, few of them. And uh, we write to the Rebbe, we, uh, we're putting it in, and where it's coming out, this is our answer. So I can, I can tell you the story, I got here because the Rebbe blessing from Igor Kodesh. Mm -hmm. It was a crazy story. And yesterday I wrote to the Rebbe by myself, I'm talking about myself, not of and many of the travelers that uh, that writing for the Rebbe and getting you know crazy crazy blessings and crazy uh, and crazy answers about what they ask. There is many stories about it. And but just yesterday I wrote to the Rebbe about the, um, my my mom asked me to to visit Israel. There is a there is a wedding for some of the family, and she asked me to to come over. So I wrote to the Rebbe. To say, you know, I'm, I'm a shlichut, I'm here, I have a, I have a duty. But, so I wrote to the Rebbe to ask, uh, should I go, should I stay? And the Rebbe said, um, you know, in real words, about the Aliyah, it's not a good time. And, you know, it's a letter for someone else, so there is some, some uh, other details. But it said, um, I can show you on my phone, I just took a picture. And you just put it in in a random place in the book? Yeah. You just choose a random page and you put it in. Yeah. It's on Hebrew, but I will translate. Inne bichlal asvara nechonai ledati, ela she'en lemaer ba'aliyah. Okay? So the Rebbe said, it's a good idea to visit Israel. Yeah? Uh, for that person, it, it's to make an aliyah. And it's not the time. And the Rebbe explained it because uh, there is a... There is no, uh, um, he has no job there and, you know, that kind of stuff about this person. But I, I got my answer. And also there, there are many people that, uh, that using it here. Everyone is welcome to, to write to the Rebbe and we're getting, uh, you know, answers and blessings. Sometimes we don't understand, understand in that moment, but we will understand in... In two days, in one month. It's not always as direct as that. Yeah, uh -huh. it's not always, you know, it's how much you believe. Yeah. But uh, this is a good question. So this is one of the books. We're getting back to the question. <laughs> what is these books? So this is the Aron Kodesh. Maybe you can explain also yeah. what is this? Yes. The drawing so on the outside? This is Bet Amikdash. This is the home of God in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And it's not, these days do not exist. It was two already, the first and the second. And, and in the redemption on the Ula, when the Rebbe Melch HaMoshiach will take us to the redemption, will be the third. So when, uh, on the Jewish books it said that the third will never break. It will be forever. The, the past two break and not exist anymore. Today there is, there is the Kotel, but the, the real building is not there. But in the redemption, this is the you know this is the building that we open for part of the Gilula. So this is the building. And, and behind this is yeah. the most important book of all the yeah. books. Sure. Behind it is the Sefer Torah. So now these days we have here only three. 
sometimes because you know it's the central station so some uh, Chabad house uh, or even uh, other other uh, Jewish uh, um, uh, plants that uh, having here Sefer Torah when they don't want to leave it in the off season so they bring they bring it uh, here so sometimes there is five six uh, uh, books in from India. other parts of yeah, India other, because they don't want to leave it uh, alone when it's closed. Right. So they brought it. So now we have only three. Okay. So so we have here um, three special and um, Sifra Torah, three special books. So the first one is this. You seeing a new. Uh, New cover. This is the original. You see, it's really old. Oh wow! But this is a very special book. It was um, one of the Lubavitcher uh, Bochel on the yeshiva of 770. A real speci special special a uh, young guy, and and he he came from the dorm on Brooklyn. It's against the 770. This uh, we sleep. Uh, against the Eastern Parkway is crossing, if you know that, that place. And he crossed the street and someone hit him with the car. He died. So um, so his friends, he, I think he was here. Um, I'm not sure, you know, it's old story. It's about uh, um, 70 years ago. But his friends managed and uh, arranged um, donations and collect money for making a book on his name mm -hmm. in the Jewish uh, every every Jewish uh, shul most of the books are you know someone donated or uh, it's their, their name that the name is making like it's his uh, book so this is one special really really special uh, book because it's of someone that that just killed of Kiddush Hashem mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you can see it. Um, his name is Shmuel Yosef Wexler. No, sorry, Ephraim Wexler. His, his father is Shmuel Yosef. Okay, Ephraim. This is the book of Ephraim. This one, it's, it's uh, personal uh, uh, connected to me because it's it's a book new, brand new, um, from the last year. We got it maybe five months ago, six months ago. To here to India before it was a problem to to bring it. This uh, uh, this book was right for uh, for uh, remember my grandma. So you can see Rachel Sudri. It's the mother of the of the main shaliach here, as I say, Rabbi Akiva. Uh -huh. that I taking its place now. Um, so this is you can see the same design with the Beit Hamikdash with the building, and uh, this is the second book. This is the third book. This we don't have the case now. The case is still in Mumbai. Mm -hmm. Someone from Mumbai, there is a shul in there that uh, they don't use it, and someone donated from Mumbai to here. So, you know, the scroll is here, but the, it's wrapped in a talit. Yeah, this is what we do when we don't have the cover. Mm -hmm. And this is a Sephardic uh, book. Mm -hmm. This is Ashkenazic. You can see it's it's open. It's open like, like a scroll, mm -hmm. but as far as it is like a real case from wood or gold or you know whatever, but something hard that uh, they open it like this. Um, so we don't have the case now, but we will get it sometime. Amazing. Uh, so this is the three books we have now. Sometimes, like I said, there is many books in here from different places from. Uh, um, Manali, there is Chabad House. In uh, Purga, there is a uh, Bait Yehudi. Um, Goa? So, uh, no, on Purga. Mm -hmm. so, sometimes they're on uh, Purga, sometimes they're on uh, Goa. So when when they they transfer in the places, so we got the the book. And this is the rest of the you know of the the book. This is Sidurim, the machine. This is for um, everyday pray. And for uh, Saturday for Shabbatot, and this is some uh, Alacha, Alacha books. 
um, yeah, this is this is uh, to explain the rules. You know, if I if I have any question, someone have a question about how do I need to do something, how do how do I need to act? So, you know, there is many, but we have here a small amount. And here, it's as you can see, it's some books. You know, more uh, reading books. Mm -hmm. So it's not it, it's not reading. Uh, you know, like uh, regular books uh, that we know. But it's uh, reading books that about uh, about uh, Mashiach, about uh, Torah, about uh, let me see what else we got here. Some stories from uh, uh, Russia before the before they opened um, stories of the rabbis. This is uh, every. This is a set of books that every rabbi, we have seven rabbis on, uh, on Chabad, mm -hmm. and everyone gets a book and stories. You know, this is like, if someone wants to dive in and a little bit uh, uh, learn something in a fun way, and in uh, interesting way, so this is, the, this is the book. We have many on the, on the couches, on the, on the restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, so this is the, this is the show. And here you can see now it's now it's called empty. You can show the bags. Yeah, <laughs> ah, this is this is what you would consider this is about um, ah, tzedakah. tzedakah. So also before the pray, and um, we put in tzedakah. Also it says tzedakah gedolat tzedakah shemekarevet etagevula. This is one of the ways to bring Moshiach, to bring the redemption. So um, um, as, as not 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 a lot of people know it, but Chabad House is. Uh, is working on on money. We don't have any uh, any. We're not getting money from any uh, you know, uh, gufim from anyone. Just people that uh, come here and you know donate some. Uh, uh, if it's uh, some traveler, it's uh, ten rupees, one hundred rupees, as 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 he can, as he afford. Mm -hmm. And if it's someone uh, that can afford more, so more. But this is the way that uh, we can we can give that services. The tzedakah. We have a big one in there. Pushka, it's called in English. Um, and this is this is the um, you know everyone coming with a bag for the first time or the leaving the the guest house. They don't want to pay for uh, extra night or you know. So they come in just with the, the the first time. I just told this guy that was here. Um, yesterday he, he got scammed. Um, they took him to. They, they have a story that main bazaar is closed. The place is closed, and there is a war, and there is you know every time it's a crazy story that I'm hearing. But um, they don't want. They don't want to. Pe they don't want the people to come here because they want to send them to different places to to get some money out, uh, out of it. Um, so the first thing that uh, people doing here. They they arriving in the airport and coming straight to Chabad House. Then they coming asking where can I do SIM card and right. buy tickets for the for the for the sleeper. Where where can I sleep? Good place, cheap place, you know. So this is the information uh, information desk, and the also the storage. So we allow we we allowing people to leave it um, till the night because security reasons. We're not allowing it to um, to stay overnight, but you know, from eight eight on the morning to ten on the uh, ten on the night, everything is full. Now it's called empty. You know, sometime uh, maybe you come next week on Sunday, Monday, or something. You will see there is no there is no way to to cross because everything is full from even the the shul all the way here here. All the way here, you have maybe small, uh, small place to Passage. cross. So you consider this a light? This is yeah, light. this is like... Chill. Yeah. <laughs> Not even started. <laughs> you know, there is no one is here. <coughs> even it's, you know, uh, you know, maybe 20 to 30 people yeah. here, but it's not, uh, it's not busy. Yeah. So we have, uh, you know, some place to sit. Mm -hmm. um, you're not feeling it, but... This place is very cool, um, and I mean in the boat, uh, boat meaning <laughs> it's very cold because uh, outside is uh, um, 40 to 50 de degrees Celsius. 
So we have here three powerful aces. In India, it's not uh, it's not so uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not so common. But um, you know, so people are coming here to to be cooled down a little bit. And uh, this is the couches, uh, to the place to sit. We have here that as I, I told you before. This is the, all the signatures, not all, some of them, the signatures about the Rebbe is Moshiach and the Rebbe is Navi. And this is in a, <laughs> about the, uh, before. Here there is, a, there, there is a service to get kosher food on the plane out of India. Yeah, you can see here, India, yeah. kosher travel, kosher in India. Yes, so these so are organizations by Chabad? Um, so this is our logo. This is... Um, Kosher in India, this is uh, the company of, uh, you know, to manage the uh, stuff here. And India Kosher Travel is a company that work with us. Mm -hmm. uh, one guy um, that helps us a lot and we, we know we're working with them. Um, and they're making the kosher food, it's on our supervision. And so we, we, we're giving uh, kosher food for, the, for flights, for a few airlines, for Air India, for... Uh, for Ethiopian Airlines and a few that are coming out for, uh, out of India. So if someone wants kosher food for the for the flight, it's free. You just need to scan the the, the code and send the send his ticket and you get him. Wow, that's food. amazing. Yeah. Wow. It's free and it's more tasty than the other. <laughs> I didn't taste that. <laughs> you know. Wow, that's actually amazing. In a nice vibes. You know, it's it's uh, powerful. Um, here we have, this is an interesting map, I will explain about that, but here we have uh, to register for Shabbat. Not many of the people, you know, they're not coming on uh, uh, too early to register, but we're putting it here to register for Shabbat, that we will know um, how many people to, to, you know, to order from the kitchen, right. how many uh, courses. Um, and here there is a way to donate on a, on a PayPal, on credit card. And this is interesting because there is one agent that is selling, he making change. Uh, you know, local agent. He making change, he making... Uh, now it start also to make SIM cards. <laughs> but is everything. Like everything that uh, someone need to buy. A ticket, change, uh, change money, you know. Whatever I, I think that uh, Israel need, so they they going and he called Avi even. It's an Israeli name Avi, yeah. So it, it he called himself Avi, and everyone and um, people coming. Where is Avi? Where is Avi? Where is Avi? He's very famous. Also, we we send people. We working with him a little bit, but mm -hmm. so we said we send people because he is trustable. A lot of the people are scammers. And Avi speaks Hebrew. He's not speaking Hebrew. No, uh. A few words, but uh, so this is the map. Because sometimes if there is no one here, so uh, <laughs> I think we gotta go visit Avi. Yeah. Okay, so go say hi. To, I'm sure he'll be happy so to talk on me, camera. Where's Avi? Yeah. <laughs> where's Avi? Can you point? <laughs> so you go. You're going out. You take a right and the and the next right. Okay. <laughs> this, this is maybe the, the ten thousand times. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now we can go to the restaurant. You can see the second uh, second floor restaurant. Uh -huh. Let's go up. Yeah. You lead the way. Yeah, right, one second before. There is the smoking area. Uh -huh. You see the everyone like it. Um, and uh, we, you know, sitting that everyone talking, you know, some uh, information coming out and in. And a new a new travel, take all the experience from the old one. Because here it's a special, special place because people coming out after six, eight, months in India and they meeting people of uh, you know the first day yeah so the connection making good for both they share the, ex the experience they getting the you know the advices and they can use it for uh, for the trip and behind there is your kitchen so this is the logistic uh, logistics uh, building logistic building to run this whole operation yeah sure so <laughs> the people are and this is the place for the people and there is a full building for, uh, you know, for run the place. Cool. So, let's go to the restaurant. So, 
like I said, now it's empty. Yeah. We came early in the morning, <laughs> and, uh, and it's not a busy day. But this is the kosher restaurant, the only kosher restaurant, uh, the only kosher service uh, here in, uh, in Delhi, and all over thousands of kilometers. And uh, we, it's really affordable prices. As you say, it's you know it's a kosher restaurant, and the idea is to give people the the, the kosher food right. from home, even to India, even to Delhi. Because this is part of the of the rules that we talked about mm -hmm. uh, before, and to eat only kosher food. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's also a big operation because there is, there is hard to find here um, uh, kosher products or some we need to send from Israel, and because it's not uh, possible to import, so it's even harder. So we need to send, you know, with bags. And what happens in the perspective of shechita? Do you guys kill your own chicken here or beef or? So we're not killing. Mm -hmm. Slaughtering. <laughs> we're slaughtering. We're cutting. Um, we're making. Um, from time to time, we bring someone from Israel. Uh -huh. you know, there is some people that can uh, cut here, but uh, you know, for massive uh, amount, we bring some someone special. Um, he coming every time. Very nice guy. And uh, we're going to we we're going to a special. Uh, Factory that they're dealing with it, and we and we're making the the lunch special for us because it's different. They're making their halal and just uh, regular uh, chickens, <coughs> but uh, and we taking the line and making us uh, making it uh, uh, usable for us, and then uh, we're making around four thousand, five thousand sometimes, <coughs> and we even give out uh, for all over India. So there is some places that after some time they making you know their their own shkita, and uh, but this is the the biggest shkita in all India, and we're giving this this is the in this restaurant we, we use uh, most of the chickens, but we using most of the chickens, but uh, also we sending uh, to Manali sometimes to so it's on the north of uh, uh, India. Uh, Rish, Rishikesh, Damsala. Uh, Amazing. Uh, so you guys are the hub and you send even, it. Even for Nepal. We're standing for Nepal. Really? Uh, yeah. For the Chabad and Kathmandu? Yeah. Wow. Actually, from Amazing. Uh, so here we use only chicken because the cows is only in India. Right. And uh, it's not possible to, to eat meat here. So we have only chicken. And uh, some, uh, some of the, the food is also vegan. Indian is a vegan. Uh, <laughs> Indian is a vegan uh, country. So, uh, so some of the people coming with the with the vibe who is vegan, so we have some uh, some of vegan, some of chicken. Yeah, maybe you can show but us the menu what here. What is special on the on that uh, restaurant? Yeah, there's also an English one, so in Hebrew. What is special in my in my uh, my point point of view? That is really a lot of prices because. Uh, we want we want people to eat kosher. We want to give them the opportunity to real, to really do it. Yeah. So we cannot take prizes um, like uh, you know restaurant in Israel. So as you can see, it's a uh, uh, schnitzel. Schnitzel on a plate. Yeah. Schnitzel is the most. This is the most uh, the, the most sold. Uh, Thing on, the menu. on the menu. This is what I will be ordering, yeah. by the way. That's what I'm going to order today. <laughs> people coming sometimes, uh, entering the Chabad house and saying, people told us to come eat the schnitzel here. It's the best schnitzel in What's the price? <laughs> $3.75. So to give context, if you were in a kosher restaurant in New York, or in Miami, or in a lot of other places around yes. the world, a schnitzel on a plate would be like sometimes... $15 to $17, sometimes $20, yeah. sometimes $10, but $3. Sometimes even 30 <laughs> Sometimes even 30 But $3 is unheard of. And actually, I found it that eating kosher in Asia it's is actually cheap. a lot cheaper <laughs> than anywhere else in the world. Yeah. No, so um, I think in India, it's, you know, it's, it's really um, lowest prices um, because people outside paying for, uh, for rice and uh, chapati maybe a few a few um, a few rupees it's right less than one dollar yeah. so this is not a competition and kosher food is 
a lot a lot uh, higher in the prices, you know, to cut the chicken. Yeah. You know, buying every chicken, uh, you know, we need to bring someone. Also, the products, we're using some of the products uh, that import from the U.S. Sometimes uh, sometime we bring from Israel uh, a lot of products, so the price is much higher. But even even though we, we're keeping the, the prices, you know, it's not the... It's not, uh, some some of the things here even we're losing money for the for to sell it. But the idea is the Jewish people will come here and the, the kosher food will be affordable. So if someone came in from you know for uh, for a vacation, he will <laughs> he will not understand why is that price. But if someone uh, coming to travel for uh, for uh, six seven eight months, they just want to lower lower, lower the ex the expenses. So every, every, every dollar is important. So this is why the prices are very cheap. Cool. And as we, as we do in every Bet Chabad, every kosher restaurant in Asia we've been doing so far, we're going to order some food. We're going to taste it for you guys. We're going to show you what it's like because uh, it's time for us to eat. I'm going to be eating schnitzel for breakfast today. I'm very excited. <laughs> um, I'm but, not sure they... they uh, maybe they can't serve it yet. Okay. Yeah, just on 12. You guys okay. open at 12, the no, kitchen? The, the kitchen is open 9 to 9. 9 to 9. But till 12, maybe I'll, uh, I will arrange something. Make an okay. exception for the YouTuber in the building. We try. Yeah. Um, but, um, if not, you will come after. You know, it's it's so special that it's worth the time special for the schnitzel. A little bit of an interview with Mendy, as we've been doing with all the rabbis. I know that a lot of you guys get a lot of insight from the Jewish world, especially there's a lot of non-Jews watching this and you're curious about what gets a person like Mendy to come live in India, which is like a big shakeup from being a religious Jew in Israel. So, I mean, the first question that I want to ask is, what is it that actually gets you up in the morning and like makes you do what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. You're living a life that's not about yourself anymore. You're here to help tons of other Jews around the world and obviously push a spiritual message. But what, what is it that actually gets you to wake up every morning and do this? So it's a good question. <laughs> because, you know, wake up is not so easy even, especially if you're working all night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we talked about it and we, we give the spoiler, but uh, the... The, the the only thing that that can bring me here and you know if not him I never possibly I never visit the, even India for one minute mm -hmm. and so it's there that uh, so we talked about it that is the president of the generation and uh, and he caring about every Jew and one of the ways to care to to care of every every Jew and every person in the world, it's uh, it's Chabad house because um, because there there are there are many there are many uh, Jewish that coming to Chabad house and uh, uh, coming to India first, yeah. And sometimes they need some help. They need to. They, they have some questions. Uh, they need uh, sometimes on emer emergency. Uh, you know. Uh, I also have a few stories about that, but uh, <laughs> we'll keep it uh, um, emergency uh, um, stuff. And you know, so we here, the Rebbe, the Rebbe sent us here to exactly for that, for being a home and caring about every Jew that uh, that will will be around. And the Rebbe said that. The 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 ideal and what we want to do it is to that every Jew will have a place and will have um, a, a, a chabad house or someone that will care about them um, even in uh, it's called on rochaniut on spirit on on uh, on the religion on the you know on on the, on the spirit stuff and. And also for the physical uh, needs, for uh, um, for kosher food, uh, it's kosher food. It's both. It's also <laughs> it's also religious and also um, and also um, physical needs because here in uh, Delhi, uh, you know, it's not the food is not so healthy for uh, outside people because because of the water. It's, uh, the water is not clean. The, um, it, the, it's not the it, it, hygiene. It's hygiene. Not, hygiene. It's not so uh, so high <laughs> in uh, in that world. 
<coughs> and um, so even people that not that they that they don't uh, they don't want uh, especially kosher food but they want you know good food that they know it's clean and nothing will happen if they will eat it um, I, I I got a guy here that uh, he coming a lot he working here there is also people that work in here not only travel and uh, and you know he he hit he hate here um, every, every single day for maybe a month. And one day he didn't came here and uh, and he ate around his factory. He is running uh, some uh, factory around. And <laughs> so we eat some you know vegetables in uh, egg roll or something. And after a few days he have to 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 leave India because his stomach he got some. I don't know even the name of the of that uh, um, of that of what he get, but yeah, he, get, he have to go to to his place back and living in India, and he and he now in uh, you know he need to take uh, medicines and everything, even five months after. Oh, wow. So you know even 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 for physical uh, good food and healthy food and uh, and you. You know that you can trust someone that nothing in there and it's real clean and uh, and healthy so this is also so this is about kosher food and and uh, about uh, other stuff you know so, sometimes people we have your free wi-fi we and that someone that don't have a sim card need to communicate need to check some some messages some uh, directions we have your uh, coffee water and um, place to stay People that uh, between uh, between flight between uh, um, uh, dry um, you know uh, between uh, buses <coughs> so so they need a place to stay for uh, for a while and uh, so th this is this is our services and if some someone need something something special so this is why we're here and what what would you say has been the hardest part about being Jewish in India for you, if there has been a hard part? The meat. The meat? <laughs> not having meat. Yeah, not having meat. This is, you know, I'm, I'm joking, but uh, this is the, the <laughs> first thing that I'm thinking of. You know, to be a Jewish in India, it's not a real problem because uh, from, uh, from the people, like 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 us here you know most of them and uh, we i have some some uh, local friends that help me when i need and it, even it's, it's a good story uh, on uh, on uh, the day before pesach pesach it's the it's the cleaning the cleaning holiday for the jewish people because um because we need to clean all the house like real clean to take out everything and wash and you know it's crazy it's uh, maybe two two weeks of working and uh, the last day before uh, the last day before that holiday we are, we ran out of water because uh okay, tough. Um, we are we are running out of water because you know we we got we getting water every day for 2 hours then we have a, we we have a tank on the on the roof few tanks that we're filling out in that two hours and then we have water for the rest of the day so sometimes the, there is the, the water is not coming even for the two hours or sometimes there is too much people and using uh, the water more so it's uh, finished and that days before Pesach we didn't get any water for a few days so we ran out we fully out of water and uh, and I have a friend here he has a hotel around if you if you walk, it's uh, maybe three minutes to walk, but it's really behind the building. <laughs> and he and, and he has water, and he told me, take for me. Like, I don't care. You need it. I don't need it. Just take it. And you know, it's not not everyone will do it for you. But this is this is this is a friend that working that uh, you know working here in that area, and uh, and. He, 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 he like he like us. He like he's the local. He's Indian. He's local Indian. Yeah, he has nothing to do with uh, with Jewish. With you know, it's just uh, just a friend. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he saved us on the last minute. So uh, this is one of the stories uh, about Jew be Jewish 
um, from the side of you know from the local and the people and there there are some that you know making problems like every every place but it's a, it's a safe place there is no anti anti-semitism and uh, and that kind of stuff and even uh, i just saw like walking here on the street there's a mosque uh he's yeah. got like right next to the synagogue yeah and, and you next see to the new synagogue yeah <laughs> and you can next see jews and muslims like living yeah it's right. still building still building uh, um two buildings next to each other you know obviously jewish people have been in india for a couple thousand years from what i know the history is pretty ancient yeah. And a lot of people might ask, okay, what, when I asked in the first second part of the video, is like, are you Indian? You're like, no, I'm from Israel originally. What, do you have any connection? Do you have any connection to local Indian Jews? Do local Indian Jews ever come here to this Chabad? Uh, um, so, sure. <clears throat> there is a, here in Delhi, there is no, there is no uh, community, like maybe small, and uh, and uh, and the reason is because uh, you know it's it's uh, it's the capital, but it's not the uh, people moving to work here. So in Mumbai, there is still a, there is still a big community. But all over India, most of the communities went to Israel, making Aliyah. So also from Delhi, there is no no peop no Jewish Indian people in Delhi. <clears throat> there is the there is one the last uh, Jewish Indian family, Mishpachat uh, Chaim, Chaim family that they uh, they coming every Saturday for uh, for Shabbat meal sometime. They did here the bar mitzvah for their kids on that place uh, a while ago, yeah. But uh, they did it here, and uh, we have a really good connection with them. And uh, even even two of their sons that already make bar mitzvah and they are around the 20 now, so they make aliyah to Israel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so you know only the the old people are staying and the the last children. So now they, they have one more uh, kid that uh, still uh, in school and everything. But uh, I think when when he will grow and uh, he also will make aliyah. But this this family is one of our uh, you know. Uh, family on the community, families of the community, and uh, and also we have uh, we have one more uh, uh, guy called Ezra, and uh, he's also he's uh, he's lonely like uh, he's by himself, and uh, he coming every Shabbat, every every Shabbat meal, every uh, even he coming. We have we, we have a chavurta. It's called. We learn every day, uh, every Sunday. Tanya, um, for uh, one or two hours every Sunday, and he coming a lot every holiday, every you know, and he is also connected and he's sometimes helping with, you know, he's, he has some connections here. He helped on the on the old Chabad house. Now he's a little uh, old. Uh, he's very mebugal. Uh, uh, um, and he's an Indian Jew. He's an Indian Jew. He working here, and. Uh, and he coming every time, and we have a really good connection with them. Mm -hmm. So th this is the community. There is also synagogue, um, but it's not you know it's not uh, it's not working uh, um, uh, too much. So we, you can visit the place. There is a of only Israeli backpackers. No, every Jew. This is a home for every Jew, yeah. no matter what color skin you are, no matter what. This is a home for every single Jew. This is this is the rabbi. He caring about every Jew. It's not matter what your name, how you looking like, and what you believe. You Jewish and you welcome. Good. It's just in itself. <laughs> so you already know you're a professional now at the Israeli food. Uh, yes. Yeah. I've been working here a long time. You know? Long time. Wow. Look at this pita, it's the size of my head. With Palgit inside, it looks amazing. Mm. I'm gonna try the shukshuka. Mm. 
with that group. It's all very delicious as it is in every Bet Chabad we've been to. <laughs> That was, I'm so full. Okay, now that we're filled up on food, I thought it would be interesting to show off this uh, street here. Uh, where's that shop with all the pictures? That's what I'm curious about. So you can see here on the street, like there's so many signs here in Hebrew. Uh, these are like, I guess, uh, endorsements from other Israeli travelers in Hebrew on the door that they're sort of brandishing to make sure that other Israelis come here. And it's like all along this street here. You can see the sign here. It says Avi Mi Varanasi, which means Avi from Varanasi. There's uh, like sales and maps, a big selection of things. And then here in Hebrew, it says we speak Hebrew here. Alan. Avi, you speak English also? English okay? Ani nira hodi. Avi said I look Indian. <laughs> okay, so this is Avi. Avi Varanasi. Avi Varanasi. Are you are you at the Varanasi? Ani me Varanasi ne oladi ti be Varanasi. Yesli gam khanut shama, yesli gam maksan shama, yesli gam the bay chalem shama. Aval ba lifne karona elanu arvas nefim gam be Varanasi, gam be Delhi, gam be Pushkar, gam be Dharamsala. Wow, so he says he's from Varanasi originally. He's got businesses there. He's got a house there. And he had a bunch of different businesses in Pushkar and Varanasi. Pushkar, Varanasi, Dharamsala. Dharamsala. And Delhi. And Delhi. Delhi. But after the uh, pandemic? After Corona, after Corona, I am in the Khanud, in Delhi. And in the name of Hashem, I will continue to continue. All the people are open. So after the coronavirus, a lot of the franchises closed down. So he's based only here in Delhi now. But by the by the will of God. Yeah. Open up another one. Okay, I have to ask you, why why do you speak such good Hebrew? You're not Jewish. Are you Jewish? So you're not Jewish. How do you speak such good Hebrew like this? So he's saying basically he got a lot of love from Israeli travelers throughout the years. 20, 20 years he's been working with Israeli travelers. And he has, there's two sayings, there's two Hebrew words, shakran and sakran, which is a liar and uh, somebody who's curious. And he comes off way more as curious and he was curious to learn the language and he's never sat down and studied Hebrew. He just picked it up by customers coming into a store and doing business with them. Absolutely amazing, obvious. Uh, super nice to meet you. So this is just one one story here on the street, Avi. Ken, Let's give a shout out to Avi. Okay, guys. So you come down here, you can meet Avi from Varanasi. Come say hello to him. Come buy some of his goods in the store. Uh, voilà, voilà,
Amazing, amazing. And that's just, that wasn't planned. We didn't even know yeah. that. <laughs> We're actually looking for another Avi that also apparently speaks Hebrew. Kamat monot sirdan. Ah? Ah, ken. Ba'ava. I was just thrown off. There's more people speaking Hebrew on the street. Ken. So Avi was saying he wanted to add one more thing. He said he had been invited to Israel three times. Three different times and by the help of his Israeli friends who hosted him with a place to stay, with food, with everything. And he's so, so grateful to Israelis for coming into his life. Amazing, Avi. Nice to meet you. So this is Raul and he also speaks Hebrew. <laughs> so I was asking you basically how many Indians on this street know how to speak fluent Hebrew? Saying you learned everything here on the street? Everything from the street? So he's saying that he had a cart where you make eggs with his father and he wanted to do something special for Israeli travelers but he hasn't had the opportunity yet because he hasn't had the money. That's the reason. Tal. Tal. He's saying Moshe is very hot. It's a surreal experience, a little bit, no? A little bit, yeah. I tell you what, like I feel like we're we haven't been mentally ready for India. This is one of those things we're not like mentally ready for. It's, uh, you know, like Indians that are speaking Hebrew fluently. They got on the, they're on the hustle, the hustle of the Israeli tourist train. And it's interesting because you can actually have a very comfortable conversation with the people here in fluent Hebrew. I mean, he, I would say his Hebrew was better than yours. Not, not that your, he, not that your Hebrew is bad, but, that hurts. That but hurts. like accent wise, no, like accent wise, his Hebrew was flawless. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys in this area, immediately next to the Chabad house, was there's another Avi that apparently speaks a little bit of Hebrew but also works with Israeli tourists. I wanted to see if we could meet him and talk to him on the camera and just see his thoughts on working with Israelis. All right, we found the place. I just wanted to show this sign and I'm hopefully gonna get a chance to speak to Avi in a minute, but uh, this sign says here, dear Israelis, please be careful. The people on the street that speak Hebrew they're not actually part of this travel company, Avi Travels. They are scammers that are trying to scam you. Don't speak to them. Exactly what just happened. Well, it's not like we got scammed or something. It's not like anything happened. But, uh, you know, this is a classic tale across Southeast Asia. Any place that Israelis dwell for long periods of time. Uh, a lot of locals learn how to speak Hebrew. And because Israelis usually come with a little bit of more cash in their pocket and kind of our big spenders. While a lot of Israelis can be frugal, um, a lot of locals know that, you know, Israelis are big spenders, so you can make a lot of money from them. Nadav, uh, I met Nadav the other day at the airport. We flew together from Vietnam or we maybe we landed at the same time. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, how did you find Avi? How did you find this place? Uh, I find I find Avi uh, in... I go to 
uh, to Chabad house and uh, the rabbi tell me that Avi closed the bus and the slipper to the Ramtala. So I go in the street and uh, now I'm here. And Avi, thank you, call the friends and not speak to me. And I want bus, I want bus! <laughs> Is this Avi? No, this is Doge. Uh, so this is Avi's uh, place. Uh, this is the place that uh, the guy inside the Chabad, the rabbi, was telling us to come to, to book some travel. See, there's Israelis coming in and out of the building. Uh, you know, there's Israelis outside on the street. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to point out. Obviously, there's some sort of conflict here between who's the real people helping the Israelis and who's not. I don't know who's, I don't know what's up and what's down, but, you know, it's interesting.